we ran into a big problem. And we feel like idiots. Whoa! Whoa, whoa, whoa! We have something else that we were just so lucky to get dropped off at our property. This is one reason not to get an abandoned property. What's up guys, welcome back. This week and for probably multiple weeks, we are biting off a giant project. It's gonna be a tough one. We are going to be building our big front gate. We wanna have a one working door, a regular walkthrough door one giant gate that we can drive through and we want it to be tall we're looking for privacy and durability and also looking cool yeah privacy durability security aesthetically pleasing a lot of boxes to check but sooner or later you got to pull that band-aid off you got to put on your big boy pants and say time to be a construction worker let's rip it As you can see behind us, it's our RV. It's clearly right next to the road, and so we gotta move it. The problem is we don't really have anything to move it. We do have the little truck. A little taco Little here. taco. We put a ball hitch on it. We're gonna try to see if we can move it a little bit. Obviously, it's not a good idea to do this and move it a distance, but we think maybe a few feet here and there it might work well let's test it we only got to move her 15 20 feet and if i can't get her moved with the taco the main thing is i know it can move the weight that i'm certain of um but it, i'm not sure if it's gonna the tires are gonna slide i don't have real thickly treaded tires so it's not too wet but it only takes a little bit so i'm hoping i can push her back 15 20 feet and it shouldn't be an issue but that truck's pretty pretty nutless to be honest a little two by four four banger so it's not a it's not a beast All right, so a little taco did just fine. It seemed to have some sort of setting on it though, where the wheels would spin, it would just stop going. So I don't know if that's like, a, so you don't dig yourself in a hole or what that was, or that's all my taco geniuses out there. Let me know what kind of setting that was, because it would do that. It did seem to be a tough move, um, but we got her back. She's looking pretty good. Unfortunately, I have to move my chicken coop. No big deal because it is mobile, but Chris is gonna have to help me get the wheels on this bad boy. Which tire, blue or black? Uh, black, blues in the butt, blacks in the front. So what, get a blue and a black, because when I lift it up, you'll be able to do front and back at the same time. Okay, ready? I feel like a NASCAR. 
NASCAR, I'm not very fast. Now the reason I was a little upset that I had to move the chicken coop was because, not because it's heavy, it's easy to move, no big worries there, but I planted some grass seed over this clay and I was just, you know I got the black thumb, they call me Black Thumb McGee over here, but I had these little grasses coming in and it was looking real promising and then I had to just rip it all up and tear it up, so I'm saving this piece for sod, I'm going to replant it, I'm going to replant it right <laughs> there. not call that sod. Watch your mouth. <laughs> The next day, we got that RV moved. That was pretty hard. We didn't even have the right setup really on your ball hook. What do you call that, the hitch? Oh yeah, the hitch wasn't quite right. It, the U-bolts that I had were a little bit bigger. They were for a four inch by four inch uh, pipe. So they didn't fit on the bumper. The bumper was obviously smaller. So it slipped down a little bit, which made it really low. And then fighting with that curb I was really struggling with the height of my ball hitch and then so the way I did that is I just put a little piece of two by four in there and tightened it back up and that did help a lot um, but yeah that taco in the mud with those tires you know two by two four banger truck really ain't the one to be moving a 7,000 pound RV with so it is what it is on that but we did get it moved and I think I have a few more little adjustments but we ran into a big problem and we feel like idiots I don't, but... I feel like an idiot that we didn't think it through. It is what it is. There, space is tight up here on this entrance. So we ran into the problem with our trailer being stuck in here if we build the wall where we were going to. So we walked around, we looked at it, and we said, okay... We were basically building the wall and making a prison for our RV so it can never get out. We were imprisoning the trailer. <laughs> so what we did is because we're going to do a block wall in the front and then we're going to do like a cheaper PVC or chain link or some other sort of fence. Cheaper down, fence. Cheaper, much cheaper and much less labor intensive down the remainder of the perimeter um, later on in life. So what we did was we just shortened the block wall about five feet and where that PVC or other lighter posted fence is going to go we'll just leave that open so that the trailer can get pulled out later once our road is made once everything is good to go and we're going to move the trailer down to the spot because now we need the trailer up by the road because it's a lot easier than if we put it far down with the animals with the babies with insanity like that we want to be up up here close by so we're getting right into it today and just letting you guys know we don't have this all figured out we're going as we go that's just how we do so you guys will be with us as we figure this out. So let's go figure out exactly how long and where this wall is going to be. Let's do it. Another thing that we're kind of struggling with is that we don't want to make a curved block wall. We know it's possible and you can slightly curve it, but we don't really like the look of that. It reminds us of apartment complexes and it also is going to be a little harder and we think we'll end up getting more cracks if we attempt it so the hard part is we're trying to make a straight front wall on a very curved 
What do you call this? Your OCD. Kristen's OCD is clashing with the fact that it's going to be a square wall and then a curved no, road. No, it's just I want it to be parallel with the driveway going in. It's a round road and we're trying to do a straight thing. We're having pizza slices. It's getting a little complicated. We figured out though, so for the most part where we think it's going to go. Now we're just going to measure it and tie it up. Measure it, tie it up, make a straight line. So they say that the easement on these municipal roads here is eight feet from the road. So we're gonna start eight feet from the road. This way we don't build it and have to tear it down later. Not that everyone follows the rules, but I mean, we, we, we are going we, to. We're gonna be the only house in, you know, Western Puerto Rico that's following any sort of code. Okay, now that I have my straight line, I'm going to measure the distance and give it an overview of if it's where I like it, if it's where I want it. Okay, so we were thinking about 50 feet. 50 feet goes to right here. I'm thinking we could probably make it a little bit longer, but 50 feet might work. What do you think? Well, as long as we can get our RV slid out. I would definitely get out from there. All right, so where these bamboos are is where the gate would go. We're gonna do a Jurassic Park style opening gate. So it's gonna be wall, gate, wall, and then where the two cinder blocks are, it's gonna be a door that leads into a terrace or a garden or the property that you can walk through as well. Then it's gonna be block wall. Then from there, it's gonna be fence, a more maneuverable, cheaper, easily installed fence. This is gonna be the what's it called the statement piece I'm super excited. We finally got our diagram down. It's by the foot. We both agreed on how it's gonna go. And now it's just to get into motion. So Matt is going to be doing the hard work. He's going to be breaking up the driveway, I think with a sledgehammer. I'm nervous, that seems really hard. I'm wishing him luck and it's gonna go well. If there's anyone that can do it, I know it's him.
All right, so I got that concrete knocked out. We've discussed some principles about how we're gonna do this build. And um, first things first, I'm gonna knock the level down, the grade a little bit down on the ditch. Cause I don't think we have a big grade dispar disparagement, disparity. Uh, probably drops about a foot on that one end, but it's very subtle. So I think that we can get this prepped so that when we go to shoot our grade, it's gonna go a lot smoother. All right, it's the next day. Last night we waited till it got dark and we used a laser light level to get the perfect leveling across the whole thing. So that way we can tie a rope, what do you call it, a string line. Then we can measure from there to get the proper depth. So Matt just touched the surface of digging the trench to get it lined up to know exactly where it's gonna be. Today he's trying to finish it, dig it deeper. Mm -hmm. So. Any last words before you're gonna have to dig? Uh, I'll be all right. I ain't no, I'm no last words. I'm gonna get words after I'm done digging. But I'm not crazy about this hat because all I can get is the Ike from Tombstone, the putting up where I put it down. Then I get like the, the, who's the bad guy from wrestling? Undertaker. So it's not really great for me. I don't know about this hat. They give it to the fair tree guys that hooked it up, but. I'm not sure. Plus, we got black. it free at the hardware store. Yeah, those are like be boiling my brain. But either way, I got some digging to get done today. So I'd like to real time of life. This is Thursday. Uh, it's Thursday today. Real hour time. It's Thursday. So I'd like to get this whole thing dug out, and then be able to go chase down my steel tomorrow. Get the steel in Saturday, and then call a concrete truck to come out here and help me. So on Monday. Monday, Tuesday at the latest. I don't want that ditch open for a long time. So. Let's get busy with it and, you know, I gotta knock this out. And Kristen says she's gonna, gonna make some potato salad for me while I'm out here digging. Yeah, I do do some things, guys. <laughs> It's been a few days later and it's time to show you the updates, but real quick, before we show you the update of how the digging's been going, we have something else that we were just so lucky to get dropped off at our property. So let's show them our surprise. Why do you not look so happy about our surprise? It's not a surprise, it's more dang problems, I guess, but 
Well, let's just get into it and show them. All right, so we were going on our business. If you guys don't know, this is inside of the abandoned home. We keep our water in here. And we also got three cats that we have taken in because they, taken in because they have been left out in the bushes. And we noticed right away at this abandoned property that this, this is one reason not to get an abandoned property is that people like to throw their trash and unwanted animals. So, so far, we've, how long have we been here, Matt, at the property? Three months. Three months, and we just, this past week, we came across three new babies in the, in the bushes. We couldn't just walk by them and leave them in the bushes. They were hungry. Someone obviously didn't want them, and so we knew we could take them in. We could take care of them. And then before we knew it, there was two more left on the property on the other side. And those two are a lot more, I would say, what would you say, feral? Well, they're not as perfect and sweet as this little cross-eyed white one right here. <laughs> but yeah, so basically the way the story went down is one cat showed up. I was hard at work, Kristen was looking out the window, she saw a feral cat that we know that's around here eat a mouse and then a little baby cat follow it out but that cat has never been pregnant that feral cat that we saw so it wasn't one of her kids so she's seen this little black puffball walk out and she said oh it's a baby puff blah blah blah, blah. and we named it hoobie halloween if you ever watched that movie hoobie halloween it's the stupidest thing of all time but anyway we named him hoobie halloween so then so i go out walk up to the cat a few times i'm feeding him over the course of two days and he gets kind of close to me but won't let me grab him so i go ahead and trap him in a cage with a long rope tied it to the door I put the food in the middle, the cat goes in eat the food, slam the door shut on him, no big deal. So I caught him, thought he'd be fine, thought he was just a little upset. That cat's like super feral, won't come anywhere near us. When we had to wash it, give it a bath and flea dip it and you know, give it its little worm medicine, it was like death. You would have thought I was killing this cat. I bit through leather gloves, so it's crazy, crazy feral. And then that one, so we were going to the store to get more litter, more things for that kitten. And as we were pulling out, we saw the other three, the little white and the two black ones. And, but those are really cute and nice. Kristen just stepped out of the truck and they ran up and she scooped up all three of the kittens at one and time. When and when he means on our way, it was just outside. It's on yeah, our just property. To, yeah, we just drove around the corner. So we loaded those up, put them in here and said, okay, let's go get the stuff. And now we'll get extra because now we have another one. So as we're driving back around again, boom, same bushes. Now there's an orange one. And Kristen's like, oh my goodness, another cat, blah, blah. And I said, look, we got to get this show on the road. Let's go get the supplies. We'll come back and we'll get that orange cat. But he ended up being kind of feral as well. He's sort of starting to come around now where you can pet him a little bit. But the black one is still completely feral. We had it for about a week and it would just hide under something and it was hard to feed with the other eight cats. When you would put the food out, they would eat it all and he would really wouldn't get to them. So we put him in a cage so that we could monitor the feeding and keep him clean. We think it's a him. But yeah, so basically now we got bear plus eight. Nine okay. cats. Nine cats Basically, total. we're wondering what should we do, guys? We can't obviously just keep taking cats in. We've only been here three months and we've already accumulated. And they're all kittens. So you can't just leave a hungry kitten out in the bushes and just turn an eye. So they don't really have, what do you call them, that they have in the States? They have a few shelters, but it's not like how it they're is. They're not official, they said. Yeah, it's not like, it's not set up for that. It's just not, that's not a huge priority. Um, it is for some people, if you're one of those people, don't think it as a slight, but obviously in Florida, there's nine shelters in every town. You know, every single town has a shelter. Here, there yeah. might be three shelters on the entire island that are reputable that they can actually have the resources to care for that many animals. So it's so not something So we I've figured we are going to take care of them. We said we were gonna foster them. Maybe we can get some adopted out. Yeah, if anyone's looking for a cat, though, DM me. Well, you ain't getting my white, that white the, boy, yeah, he about to go problem. in the house. We when start Bear, liking them. Well, when Bear goes to grass, that white one might be the replacement. Plus, I'm relatively sure that one's blind, so that one can never be released. But we have our air tags coming for our initial three, so they're going to be out pretty soon. And they're, they've been to three vet appointments, and they're going to be getting fixed pretty soon. They got the rabies shots, so it's going to be another round of shots for all these new kittens. 
and it's a lot of work, but I'd love to get them, get rid of them. So if you're looking for a panther, this one's solid black. It's going to be a beast. Sweet. Look, just sweet as can be. What's this one? What? This one's a little tuxedo, you know, real cute. I mean, give it up. <laughs> but this one's a little mouthy. Let me go see if I can get a ginger, the ginger nugget. This is ginger nugget. If he's you, very scared and we're taking care of him for now. He's just now barely starting to come around to pets. You really got to get heavy on these ears or he don't really go for it. But he's a sweet boy. He is sweet. So that's the problem. Right now we're at, are we going to fall in love with all these kittens and just be crazy cat people? Or are we doing some sort of rescue here? We don't know. <laughs> But for now, we're taking care of them. Let's just hope no more come in the next couple months. And, and if y'all got, be good. if y'all got any feral cat tips, let me know because I'm gonna show y'all Hoobie, because he ain't coming around. He's barely where you can stick your hand in the cage and give him some pets. I'm trying to, trying to get him right. But I think the orange one and Hoobie are brothers. Then the other three are obviously siblings, and then we have our initial three. So, too many cats. But yeah, we can, we can figure something out. But let me know. So I've been digging my footer here by hand. Could have got a machine in here to do it, but if you don't dig your own footers, you're lame. You know, I like to do things the hard way at first, just so that way I can get a an appreciation for when it gets easier. When I was sailing, you know, Chris and I used to hand steer, and I used to say, if you if you ain't driving your own boat, you ain't sailing. If you're on autopilot, come on, don't be a joke. So if you get a machine to dig your ditches, you just soft the charmin. But anyway, I've been regretting that decision because this ditch is taking a long time. Um, it's a lot of clay, so the only effective way to do any meaningful removal of dirt is to come in here with the pick. You gotta come in, hit it, and then chunks come out like that. And then you can, once it's loose, you can go with your spade and get a little bit of it out. So it's slow going, but it's not a big problem. Um, I guess you could say I got 99 problems, but a ditch ain't one, because I got a nice ditch here. Matthew. <laughs> what? Um, so yeah, we've been knocking it out. We should be done with it for the majority today. I may have to dig a little bit tomorrow with between feeding the kittens, feeding the chickens, doing laundry. I lost an hour or two today. So I'll have an hour or two or five, whatever, tomorrow to finish up. And then we throw steel in here. Then we pour in concrete and you know, I'm gonna be shredded by the time this is all said and done. I'm gonna get my wedding body for you, Kristen. Shredded? Are, are you excited about that? Yeah. I want to get my abs back so I can magic mic you on our wedding night and do the do the dance. <laughs> is that what if that's what it looks like? Don't worry about it. Just forget. It. Just <laughs> cancel it. It's canceled. <laughs> Dang it. All right, so we finally got all this dug out. Kristen was laughing at me. I'm getting old because I told Kristen I had this done in a day and a half, and it took me about three, three to three and a half days to dig this. But we got her all deep. What took a little bit extra was this in box here. We think it's going to look really good. It was a lot more work, but we think it's going to give it some depth before the door goes here. It's going to give a walkway, some potted plants. Kristen's a natural designer, so I just had to trust her on that and lean on that shovel. But we got her all going good. That's all going great my dad told me he would have got a machine to dig this and unfortunately that means i got two mamas because you soft dad i am a machine and the ditches are dug quit being soft quit being scared anyway it's gonna look good but we got some problems because with my lack with the shovel it turned into thanksgiving week so some contractors concrete trucks things like that are shutting down so we may not be able to do this project right away which kind of sucks for me i still have a few more things to do get the steel 
um, get all, all perfectly squared up and get it ready, get my level lines in there so that when the concrete does go in, we know exactly what we're doing. Um, so we don't know exactly when this project is going to get done, but if you'd like to see it get done quicker, uh, head over to the Patreon page. We do give updates and some videos do air faster than others. Um, so we got that going. If you're interested in that, go check that out. So the projects are moving forward. I think it's going to be beautiful. Pray for us with the cats and we'll see you next week.